All right, with this question, we're continuing our exploration of the ISLM model. Um, if you want to see these previous parts of the question, I solved them, uh, have a look at the video description where you can link back. Um, also, I'll probably do this last part in another next video. So check out the video description to skip ahead. So this part of the problem asks, using the ISLM framework, with the initial values for monetary and fiscal policy, suppose that the price level rises from two to four. What happens? and what are the new equilibrium interest rates and level of income. So in the initial setup of a model, we had um, prices. So we're, I'm going to call that P sub 1 equal to 2. That was the initial price level. And now we're saying, uh, you know, what happens to either the LM or the IS curve given prices increase to 4? Um, well, prices are a function of the LM curve. So we're going to find out what happens to the LM curve. So how do we find um, the LM curve? Well, we set um, the money, the supply for real money balances equal to our demand for real money balances. In a previous problem, we found that the demand for real money balances is described by this equation, y equals 100r. And then the money supply is just the money supply set by the central bank divided by the current price level. So uh, where before the current price level was p sub one, now the current price level is our p sub two. So plugging that in, money balances was 1,000 that we, we were told. Price levels is 4, equal to output minus 100 times the interest rate. So now we're going to rearrange that term to get our new LM curve equation. This is our new LM curve equation. The LM curve takes the form of y is equal to something in terms of r. So y is equal to 250 plus 100r. Um, building off, you know, I think part A or part B, from the previous question, um, the initial LM curve was this y is equal to 500 plus 100R, and now the LM curve is y equals 250 plus 100R. So the LM curve is shifted, so it's shifted to the left. Um, so that's our new LM curve. The next step is to find the new equilibrium real interest rate and the equilibrium output. So the equilibrium real interest rate is this R star, and the equilibrium um, level of output or income is our Y star there. So um, to start off, we're going to find um, R star, the equilibrium output. So how do we find R star? Well, you just set the IS curve equal to the LM curve. So our IS curve that we derived earlier is the 1700 minus 100 R. And our LM curve that we just derived is that 250 plus 100 R. So now we're going to find uh, solve for R. That's going to give us our equilibrium level of R. So that's what we do in these next two simple uh, algebra steps. So we find our new uh, equilibrium level of interest rates. R star is 7.25. And then uh, you know, following our, our same basic steps that I've done maybe two or three times before, we find the equilibrium level of Y. So our Y star is now 975. So what's happened? Um, we had uh, the, the money supply, uh, sorry, we had the price level increase, and that was reflected with an inward shift of the LM curve. And what was the result of that? Well, we found R star went up to 7.25. It increased from 6 to 7.25. And Y star uh, decreased from uh, 1,100 down to 975. So we found that uh, using our equations. We can also think about things in terms of our um, diagram model. So we start off with this initial LM curve of LM sub 1, uh, which, you know, our IS curve is unchanged, so IS curve is right here. The equilibrium level of output was our Y star 1, and the equilibrium interest rate was, uh, should be that, sorry, should be a sub 1 there. The equilibrium real interest rate is this R star sub 2. So um, we then uh, prices increase, so that's represented by an inward shift in the LM curve with a new equilibrium real interest rate and equilibrium output. So given the increase in the price level, we said the LM curve shifts in, interest rates increase, output decreases. So how might we think about this? You know, we've solved it through the equation, we've looked at it through the diagram. Um, intuitively, well, first off, what's a change in the price level? So higher price level reduces the supply of real money balances. Uh, P increasing is like the prices of all goods and services out there increasing, right? So if prices of everything in the economy double tomorrow, that's practically the same as if uh, everybody's money cash was halved tomorrow. Um, so that's what we mean by um, P going up. 
Um, and once again, just like the previous part, the thing that's driving this result is the theory for liquidity preferences. The idea that if there's um, now less real money balances out there, um, and assume that the demand for money is negatively related to interest rates, that is if the cost of borrowing money is higher, then people borrow less money, investments lower. So if that's the case, then the result of this is a reduction in uh, the result of this reduction in real money balances will be to drive up the interest rate. And in the basic, so think about like a basic supply and demand model maybe, uh, think about how scarcity affects prices. If there's all of a sudden less quantity of a good, then we expect prices to increase. So money here is that good, and then the interest rate is like the price of those real money balances. So less real money balances, um, because the price level has increased, means that money is more costly. So uh, also with a lower interest rate, um, the investment will, will increase, uh, excuse me, also with the higher interest rate, since interest rates have increased, that implies that investment's gonna decrease and with a lower investment, that's gonna drive down our output. Okay, so hopefully that was helpful. Uh, I'll move on to the last part of the last problem. Uh, now, uh, have a once again, have a look at the video description if you want to skip ahead or backwards. Okay, thanks. Have a good day.